If your home is like mine, what's for dinner is the most asked question of the day. In today's video, I am sharing easy dinner ideas that are perfect for weeknight meals. My first family friendly dinner idea is steak fajitas. What I've been doing is I have a, a package of these small peppers and I went ahead and got them all cut up as well as one large onion. So I've got everything diced up. I want to, I just took this steak, um, this stir fry meat out of my freezer and I wanna go ahead and get it used up. It's been in the freezer for a little while and I didn't want it to get freezer burned. So um, I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm going to put this meat in um, a Ziploc bag. The only difference is I use this meat for some broccoli and beef and it sticks together. So I'm gonna kind of break it up as I put it in the bag because it's cut really, really thin. I put cornstarch on it whenever I used it before <laughs> and I couldn't get it to the cornstarch to break the meat up and stuff. So I'm like, hmm, I learned my lesson on that one. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get this um, all broken up and I'm gonna get my olive oil and my um, lemon juice in this bag as well and then I will be back. I have both of my bags ready and I'm going to just split this um, fajita blend in each bag. What we're gonna do is we're gonna give both of these a really good mix. Now it's time to get our pan ready. What I did was I took a cookie sheet and I did go ahead and spray the aluminum foil with just a little bit of nonstick cooking spray. It shouldn't have stuck with the olive oil anyways, but my luck, you know how things go. They probably would have stuck and then we would have um, been in trouble when it came to dinner tonight. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get everything spread out here. And I'm gonna try to get these in a single um, layer. I'm gonna go ahead and let these cook just a little bit um, because they are gonna take longer than my meat. The reason why they're gonna take longer than my meat is because my meat is cut so thin. So I wanna go ahead and have these, give these a chance to get softened up um, before we add the meat to the um, pan and we'll just lay the meat on top. So I'm gonna stick these in a 450 degree oven for about five minutes to give these a head start. Oh my goodness, guys, this smells so good already. All right, I cannot wait to eat dinner. <laughs> All right, so now what we're gonna do is if you have a big piece of meat you just put it in the middle. I've got these strips, so I'm gonna kind of spread them around all over the top. And then the rest, I'm gonna pin the Pinterest recipe I found that I loosely figure out how to bake um, these sheet pan version, but I'm not doing it exactly their way. So um, I'm going to, since I have these little thin strips, I'm going to bake mine like, um, six, seven more minutes. And then if I want, I can turn the broiler on, it's suggested, um, to char up my veggies if they um, aren't looking done enough. To me, they're already well on their way. So I'm feeling pretty comfortable about where they're at, so to speak. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna finish putting all of my beef on this sheet pan as best as I can, and then I'm gonna get this back in the oven. Whenever I come back, I will tell you for sure exactly how long I baked mine. This just came out of the oven. I did bake it for seven minutes. Sorry about all the steam. And then I turned the broiler on for one minute. I just wanted to make 100% for sure that my meat was done and that my veggies are soft. 
my husband is home and I wanted to um, film his plate because I'm playing Jane and he likes uh, more things than I do. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna start out by a small layer of sour cream. Okay, and then he also wants, you want cheese first? Okay, and then he just wants, this is some of our homemade um, medium salsa out of the garden last year. And so he just wants me to put just a little bit of that across the top. And here is dinner at our house tonight. We are having steak fajitas. My next budget-friendly dinner idea is a favorite at my house, breakfast for dinner. This breakfast casserole is an easy recipe and a cheap dinner idea that is sure to please your family. We are going to be making, it's called Hissy Fit Breakfast Casserole. And um, we are going to put this together and then it goes into the oven. So after this sausage gets finished and I get it all drained up, then I'll meet you over on my counter and we'll get this put together. I am preheating my oven to 350 degrees as well. Six eggs in a bowl. And I'm gonna add milk, some onion powder, some seasoning salt, some black pepper, and some Worcestershire sauce. And I'm gonna get these beaten up. I have a nine by 13 pan that I have sprayed with nonstick cooking spray. I am gonna use a crescent dough sheet and place it along the bottom. Okay, so this pizza dough, I mean this uh, crescent dough obviously doesn't have to be perfect. Just wanna make sure you're covering the bottom. So we're gonna scoop our sausage that we browned into the pan. We are gonna add cheese. The recipe that I'm going to post um, in the description box below uses a couple different kinds of cheese. I just wanna use some cheese up that I have in my refrigerator. I feel like I'm making macaroni and cheese and not breakfast casserole. All right, now we're gonna take our eggs, milk, Worcestershire sauce, and our seasonings, and we're gonna pour it over the top. This is gonna go in our preheated oven for 40 to 50 minutes, depending on um, how your oven cooks. I'm gonna start checking this at 40 minutes. Our breakfast casserole just came out of the oven. Um, my crescent roll got pretty dark, but the eggs in the center were not set, so I had to keep letting it go. Um, it smells really, really good, and I'm gonna let this rest just a little bit, and then I'll get this plated up. Here is breakfast for dinner. I love our next dinner recipe, homemade chicken wings. While chicken wings can be expensive due to inflation, this is still considered a budget-friendly meal because it is much cheaper than eating chicken wings in a restaurant. I paid around $18 for this pack of chicken wings. At my favorite wing restaurant, our bill would have been around $45. These wings actually have two separate cooking times. The first, my oven, which is currently preheated to 250 degrees. Then we take them and we crank up the heat um, for another period of time. So the first cook time of 250, what you're trying to do is get all of your fat out of the chicken so that your skin can um, crisp up. So um, to season these wings, you're just gonna take some table salt. It is baking 
powder. This is not like a breading that you have like on fried fish or fried um, chicken. Um, it's different than that. It's a very thin layer. If you get too much of this baking powder, only thing you're going to taste is baking powder. So I would go sparing um, with the baking powder. Um, I will rest, I will post the original recipe where I found on Pinterest to make these and then you can read all about how to make them and that kind of stuff. <laughs> um, uh, just so that you can figure out what's the good ratio for you guys. So then all you're going to do is um, you are going to give this a really good shake, shake, shimmy. <laughs> shimmy, shimmy, shake, whatever you guys want to call it. As I want to show you what the chicken looks like. I'm hoping that you can see it on camera. Um, so do you see that really thin film that's on the bowl? That is what's on your chicken. It's just that layer of baking powder and salt. So here's my pan set up with my um, baking rack and my foil lined cookie sheet. And then all I'm gonna do is literally just go around and place my chicken all over this pan. Our initial cook time of of 30 minutes at 250 degrees has finished. These chicken wings are not done. I know I have said that like three times, but I can guarantee you someone will leave me a comment that the chicken wings didn't look done. <laughs> so, so they are not done. But what we're doing now is we are, we jacked up the heat in our oven to 425 degrees. We're gonna slide these back in the oven for 40, to 50 minutes depending on how big your chicken wings are. Whenever you look at your chicken wings again, after 40, 50 minutes, whichever, they should be crispy and they should be brown. So I'm gonna get these back in the oven and get my timer set and we're one step closer to having some chicken wings for dinner tonight. All right guys, our wings have about 25 minutes left and I wanted to talk to you a little bit about sauce. We use the Frank's Red Hot um, Buffalo Wing Sauce is what we use. Our wings just came out of the um, second cook time. I actually cooked mine for 50 minutes. I looked at them at 40 minutes and I said these aren't done yet. Okay guys, sorry my dishwasher is running. I hope that you can't hear that too much. But wanted to show you here is chicken wings with hot sauce and ranch dressing. Moving on to our next easy dinner recipe. When it comes to what's for dinner tonight, meatloaf is a regular response from my husband. Meatloaf is one of his favorite meals and he is even picky about the sides. It must be mashed potatoes and peas. So I have a cookie sheet lined in foil and then I have a rack just to keep the hamburger um, out of the grease at the bottom. And, all right, and then I like to do little loaves. Um, I don't like to do one big loaf because they take longer to cook and sometimes mine get dried out and it's probably I'm just doing something weird. Um, but for some reason mine do get dried out. And plus, um, if I was going to like meatloaf, I would want the crunchy parts along the edge. So, you know, just because that's what I want, you know, I automatically think that that's what my husband would want too. I'm awesome like that. <laughs> I'm gonna go ahead and pop these in the oven. 350 for about 45 minutes. So in this container, I have um, Heinz ketchup and some brown sugar, and I'm gonna add just a few dashes of Worcestershire sauce. And I'm gonna give this a really good mix, and this is gonna be the glaze that's gonna go on top of our um, meatloafs whenever they come out. They should be about done. My meatloaf just came out, and I'm going to put my ketchup mixture 
on top. They're gonna go back in the oven for 15 minutes. And here is dinner tonight at our house. Meatloaf, mashed potatoes, peas, and dinner roll. Our last recipe idea for this video is grilled hamburgers. These burgers check all of the boxes. Easy dinner, family friendly, and delicious. For sides tonight, we are going to have some corn on the cob. I was gonna do some um, uh, french fries with our hamburgers and my husband said he didn't want that. He's been working outside all day today and he's pretty hot. So he said he'd rather just have some corn on the cob and we have some watermelon. Um, and he said that he'll be good with burgers, corn on the cob and watermelon. So I'm gonna get this um, corn on the cob going while our hamburgers are cooking. Our hamburgers have came off the grill. We're gonna let these rest while our sides finish up. For dinner tonight, my husband has cut up a, um, has sliced some tomato and some onions. And then he is having um, two cheeseburgers and some corn on the cob. If he's still hungry, he said he's gonna have some watermelon as well. Thank you guys so much for following along in my What's For Dinner This Week video. I hope I have provided you some dinner inspiration and you enjoyed these easy weeknight meals. I will see you next week with another video packed full of easy meals.